So anyway, uh, brain injury and brain injury rehabilitation is, of course, a huge topic which is approached in many ways. Eventually, the most important part, whatever way we find of supporting rehabilitation, obviously is the actual training of the uh, various faculties affected by brain injury. If it's an aphasia patient, then the specific training of language. If it's uh, attention problems, specific training of attention, etc., etc. I'm not, due to the time res restrictions, going to talk about that at all. Actually, the cognitive training is something I'm only going to use pretty much as a parameter on which to evaluate whether exercise, whether the physical activation stimulation uh, actually works. So what we are going to talk about now is a supportive role of the physical training relative to the rehabilitative training. Of course, it's not replacing it. Um, I usually make the same remarks when I talk about our pharmacological research. When we try to develop drugs to support the rehabilitative training, obviously it's again not the idea that you give the patient a shot or uh, a pill or something and then we uh, believe magically language or attention or whatever will return to the patient. But we might be able, able and I'm going to briefly show you a little bit of data pharmacologically to support that rehabilitation. And that's a completely different issue. Of course, the side effects of physical activation are likely to be far less than the pharmacological side effects. So what we're talking about now, if it can work, is something that probably is a lot safer and cleaner in its use. So, first of all, is there a reason at all to approach this? Well, here is a set of data that I'm going to present a couple of times, uh, partly because it presents, I think, a challenge, and partly because these are some of our data that I like quite a bit. So, uh, well, any scientist you encounter would probably love to present their own data endlessly. So I'm going to stick to that principle. Th those groups here, this is a, a rat model uh, of brain injury. Um, and those three groups you see here, marked by the yellow arrow, are all control groups. Uh, they acquire over months a task. They had their brain injury around here a couple of weeks before, uh, and here they start our training on a task. The normals acquired very quickly, and as you can see at the red, red arrow here, you have the lesion group. There is a level of recovery. This is a spatial cognitive task. They need to identify a particular position, regardless of from where they start. It's an allocentric place learning task uh, presented in an eight-arm radial maze for those who know a little bit about that. And as you can see, the lesion group, they have a hippocampal lesion. Uh, they are severely impaired, but they do, within that month, acquire at least a certain level of skill within the task. However, the interesting part here are those two groups marked with the green arrows. Those two groups have injury completely identical with respect to both the magnitude and the location in the brain to the red group up here. But as you can see, they acquire the task much faster. Uh, they manage to come within actually rather narrow uh, vicinity of the controls within that month. Had we continued, they would probably, within a relatively few days, be at the level of the controls. And they are, all, both groups, significantly uh, improved relative uh, to that lesioned group up here. What is the difference between those three lesioned groups? Well, the red one just got the lesion and waited. The two green ones, oh, well, talking about dysfunctions, um, the two green ones had an activation treatment consisting of one month of intense activation for two hours a day. And the intense activation, and now comes the paradox, consists of an immobilization procedure. And for those who uh, are a little bit baffled by this, yes, I do know that immobilization seems to be acting a little bit against motoric activation. However, the procedure is that the animals are put into relatively small boxes, but boxes that are big enough for them to struggle to get out. They cannot get out, but we do not tell the animals. So for two hours a day, 
they spend their time in this little box trying their best to get out. They are motorically very active. Uh, they are probably rather angry with the rest of the world, us included. Uh, they are likely to be stressed. Actually, immobilization is a procedure used in many instances in experiments to induce stress. So they are likely to be stressed, quite stressed. Um, and they are fighting to get out, so they are motorically activated. And by the way, uh, they are also somatosensorily uh, rather intensely stimulated because, of course, being in this little box, they fight and they rub against the sides, etc. So for seven days, two hours a day, they spend their time in this box being activated. One of these groups had that procedure for the first week after they got brain injury. They actually had their first session as soon as they came out of anesthesia after the surgery when they had their brain injury. So they went basically straight from brain injury into this kind of regime. The other group had the same treatment for the last week before they got brain injury. So one group had it before they got the brain injury, the other one after. And statistically, there is no difference whatsoever. So the point is, in case you are to get brain injury, uh, actually, you should be rather well exercised at the moment. Um, the other point, obviously, is that uh, you can obtain quite significant uh, therapeutic effects uh, post-injury uh, by this kind of procedure. Why this is something that is of importance well beyond the clinical implications is something I'm going to return to a couple of times uh, because this actually speaks against some of the principles that are appearing otherwise. Uh, of course, one of the jokes that I have heard already, I'm just warning you, is, oh, how big do you plan to build the boxes for the patients? Uh, and uh, yes, obviously, animal models do use techniques that we do not intend to use exactly in the same form in the patients. Uh, although, well, maybe there's a room for something for Danish industry, uh, maybe an industrial collaboration in the future, building sufficiently sized boxes for the patients.